Jacob, you know what? Hey, everybody, welcome to Hey Man. I'm Josh. I'm Jacob. What do you? What? what hey what? Man. Hey Man. What's up? I I was about to text you before, like at around twelve. Bring a f- measuring tape. Yeah. I was, but it was like twelve, and then excuse me, everybody. Then I had to take a dump, and then I, I forgot. I must have shit out the idea. You got distracted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. fair. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> but. Next week, bring the measuring tape yep. so we can show everybody that I'm five, straight up 5'10 five, five, ten ten. and a half. 5'10 and a half. I love how you've dropped from 5'11. Is now. that what I said oh, originally? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I've always been 5'10 and a half. Somebody's facing life. You think I'm under 5'10. No, I think you're 5'10. I'm 5'10 and a half. You're 5'10. A half. No. 5'10 and a half. No. Five, so half. the bet for you and me was, uh, are you over or under 5'10 and a half? And I said under. And I say over. But what if you're right at 5'10 and a half? Matt will be the judge. Nobody's right exact. Okay. All right? All right. Okay. And if I'm right exact, you win. How about that? No, nah, we'll just call it a draw. But it'll, it'll, it'll still be a win for me because you're 5'10. And a half. But not 5'11. Anyways, hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait for that day. Hey, Next week. Uh, let's get... The business out of the way real quick. Yep. First of all, comedianjoshwolf.com for all tour dates. Vancouver. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. First of all, you showed up. You showed up. And there was some huge comedy that weekend in Vancouver. Somebody asked me if there was a comedy festival in town. That's how much comedy was there. Yeah. Hinchcliffe was there. Nate Bargatze was there. There was that other snowed in tour was there. Yeah, there was yeah. a lot of people there. But Josh Wolf was there. Yeah, you guys sold out all four shows. Mm-hmm. So thank you. The special tapings were so good. I got, I'm going to be, we'll give you a little inside baseball, guys. That first show, the first taping, I got into my head a little bit. Mm-hmm. That, that probably hadn't happened, I don't know how many years. Yeah. I, I can tell you were in your head because when you came off stage, we were talking a little bit and then you just looked at me and you were like, am I overthinking this? And I was like, yes. Yeah. Oh my God. I was like, I don't want to be the one to tell you. I like the fact that you made that realization, but I was like, yes. Oh my God. Yes. You're overthinking this. Yeah. And the second show was, you know, the second show guys, if I'm going to, if I do it the way I think I'm going to do it, I think will be unlike any special you've ever seen. And I'm going to tell you why. So I, I, I think I explained this. I chose a smaller venue because I have very little ego, um, and uh, so I don't need to be in a giant theater so you see the crane shot, and I, I don't need that. Right. And as a matter of fact, what my my only directive going in was the best show. Yeah. And I, for me, as a storyteller, this is different for everybody, but for me, as a storyteller, I'm better in a smaller venue. I like playing theaters, guys. Better money. I like all the people. I like the energy. So I like playing them. And if I'm not filming a special, I'll play those theaters all day long. Yeah. But for the special, I wanted to be at my best, which is, for me, are between 300 and 400 seats, right? Because I, I, as a storyteller, I like the intimacy. Right. So, but I also know what comes along with that. Yeah. Is it, if you're not in a theater, the difference between the crowds is a theater. It's so weird, guys. A theater almost makes people behave better. A comedy club feels so much looser, and there's drinks, and people bring in nachos. But that's the energy I wanted. So I had to throw somebody out mid set. <laughs> Not only did I have to, in the middle of my joke, in the middle of a joke. Oh, uh, oh, yeah, guys. So who knew what was going to hap- going to happen? In the middle of the joke, I stopped the joke. And I said to her, hey, you're going to have to leave. Just like that. And I wasn't, this was past the point of playing with her. I didn't want to get into a back and forth because I wanted to get to the special. So, right? Right. But I was like, hey, you're going to have to go. And um, it was, she was in the front. Uh, Yeah. Right? In the front row. And so we had to wait for her to, because at first she said no. And then somebody came over and was like, yeah. (laughs) Yes. And, but we had to wait for her to get up grab her drunk ass and walk out of the room. And it took a while. 
And it was fucking quiet. Super. Yeah, dude, like quiet. And then somebody right up front just goes, awkward, right? Because it was. But then I explained to him, hey, no, dude, actually, this is why I filmed here. I, I filmed in a place like this because this is the energy that I wanted. And it was, it was dead, dude. And as a comic, I had dug myself a pretty big silent hole. And it was, I obviously dug myself out and, and then picked up the joke right where I left off. Yep. And it fucking killed. Killed. I think it's such a cool insight. Maybe am I comedy nerding this? That it's interest. That is interesting to watch. For me, uh, I, I think that's interesting to watch, and it's different than any other podcast, uh, any other special, because I'm not making it perfect. What do you think? I, I would. I definitely think it's it's definitely unique, right? Because in every special, the shots are perfect. Uh, crowds behave like obviously, like you said, in a theater, people think it's like a different type of show. Yeah. So they're yeah, like you said, a little more respectful, but. I've never seen a special. I've seen a special where uh, the the person on stage talks to somebody in the crowd. Yes, but never throws somebody out and then you know, do do what you did. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's never something I've ever seen before. Uh, so uh, I mean, I I definitely think it's it's definitely different. I think it's cool. Matt, let me ask you something. And you may be closer to liking comedy nerd stuff than the average person. The inner workings and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. Um. You think it's worth leaving it in the special or, or like just clipping it? I think it makes it different. My instinct is to clip it and keep it out of the special. How come? Because there's a pacing issue. Like when you're, when you have something that people are watching on demand, you want it to flow. Mm -hmm. You want it, you want to keep them engaged. If what you're saying did bring your show to a halt, it might be interesting as like a, from a documentary point of view. Mm -hmm. But as someone who's sitting in their underwear on their couch wanting to enjoy a stand-up special, I don't want to see that. I got to tell you, first of all, That's I didn't know you watched comedy in your underwear. Always. <laughs> as, as soon as I'm home, my pants are off. <laughs> hey, listen, by the way, I hope all of you are watching my comedy with your pants off. Uh, whoa, that's whoa. how it was intended. Whoa. So, hell yeah, dude. If I was known as the pants off comic and people were like, I only watch Josh Wolf with my pants off. You don't think I would take that as a compliment? I mean, I guess, yeah. Like, it's, it is a compliment, but, like, I don't know if you want to be known to be that guy. Why not? First of all, uh, like Bert, Bert Kreischer's the shirts off comic. Why can't I be the pants off, dude? But my pants aren't off. Yours are. My comedy makes you want to take your pants off. Dude, that is the best T-shirt ever. Are you kidding? If I went on the road and every interview I did, somebody was like, dude, I listened to your comedy. It made me want to take my pants off. Everybody's coming to my show. Uh, I, you don't I mean, think people are at least curious to be like, what is this about this dude's comedy? I mean, but, definitely, but I, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't think I want to be known as the pants. I'd, I'd want to be known as the pants off comic. I do. Hey, everybody, listen. <sighs> New rule coming to my show. Uh, if you want to take your pants off, you can. I wouldn't invite that. Uh, as long as I get underwear on. You got to have underwear on, dude. You can't let the little the baby bird fly out of the nest. But but uh, is the hat crooked or the glasses? Hat. Um. Yeah, you can't let the baby bird fly out of the nest. But by, by the way, I like how you went to fix your hat and you did zero. I yeah. did. You literally, like, did you see that, Matt? He literally just like touched it with a pinky and was like, yeah, that fixed it. You did zero for fixing it. No, that fixed it. it well, yeah, you just used two hands to fix it now. I just, I just like how you were like, yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> by the way, one gray hair in my mustache and I almost had a fucking straight up meltdown. It's been there for a minute. Ah, uh, shut up. Uh... So, I think by, I see by the second way, one. comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. Uh, yeah, uh, first of all, we were in LA yesterday. We did Jason Nash's podcast. Let's get to that in yep. a second. I want to tell you, and just I want to give you your props because I think I have turned into somebody. I think it's important to give people their flowers while they're alive. Yeah. I'm not about, so, you know, my, my friends are used to it. I reach out to people I don't know. I, I, uh, we're not I don't know, but I don't know that well. But like, if I watch your comedy special, I'm a, and it's funny. I'm gonna reach out to you. Yeah, you know. And so, um, but but I want to tell you a couple things. First of all, we had a podcast, and then we had a meeting with um, some uh, a group of people 
Oh, uh, we can't really say who it is quite yet. You can just say a group of people. Um, and I want you to know that you handled yourself so well outside of our bubble. This is this is the big test, the next test, us going on other podcasts, having people on here. Right. Um, but you really handled yourself outside of the bubble really well. I appreciate it. Thank you. you know, yeah. I, I'm. You know. I, I think. I think being on stage is also just developing like a. I mean, I've always had confidence. I've always been confident talking to strangers or talking to anybody, really. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the stage time is developing, like, a, or, or not developing, but adding to my confidence in just kind of everyday aspects. I would agree with that. Yeah. Hey, your confidence, your walking around the world confidence. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I, it's so, it's uh, fantastic to see. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm curious, first of all, yesterday, the meeting we were in, I would say what excited me so much, I love being around knowledgeable people. Right. And we were in a room chock full of knowledge right. about our business. It was so exciting to me to be in that room and to share ideas and to shoot the shit. Um, but we're going to have more and more meetings like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. You, you were really, really good. I appreciate it. You know my only one note. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I do. Um, I'm also really proud of you, dude. You went and did a bar show. Yeah, I did. And this is what you need to do to, you're going to be good. You already are good. Right. But to be great, you got to get out amongst other people. Tell right. me about your experience. Going to tell me about the bar show. Tell me about your experience. Um, tell me how it was different from the shows, what you learned, what you liked, what you didn't like. Give me the whole thing. Um, I got invited to go do five minutes at a uh, at a at backstop, which is a uh, uh, like a like a dive bar, biker bar kind of vibes in uh, Boulder City, in uh, Nevada. And uh, I got invited by a buddy of ours named Kool Aid. Nevada, Nevada, Nevada. Okay. Um, and uh, for me, it was just like uh, one of my New Year's resolutions is I'm doing. I want to try and do two open mics a month because I uh, I did my or not open mics, but like shows that aren't your shows. And, and by the way, for people listening. When they're like, that doesn't sound like a lot, like a lot of people do more. Jacob already gets uh, five shows a week where he's getting between 15 and 25 minutes on stage. Right. So he's already getting a bunch of stage time and he's only in town three days a week. Uh, and he's got a beautiful girlfriend and they love each other very much. And so he's making a concerted effort to um, Sp spend the time that I have in 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 at home with my girlfriend and have balance. Balance yeah, yeah. is really important. Absolutely. Okay. Good. Um, and so I got and so I went out there. Um, and again, New Year's resolution is just to do two shows that aren't your shows because you know, like you know I want to. I went up and did one uh, earlier this January, and when I got up there, I was confident walking up. I picked up the mic, and it was like the first time I was on stage. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was also because all the lights were on and I could see everybody. Mm -hmm, that's that fucked, that yep. fucked with me a little yep, bit. Yep. Because when I told a joke and they didn't laugh, I could see how many people didn't laugh. Yeah, that's a bummer. <laughs> that was hard. Yeah. So, but, and so I, I didn't like that feeling. I didn't like that feeling of, you know, of that, like those nerves going up. And I, going into this, I was like, even if I bomb or even if I do these two shows a month and I bomb at every single one, I want to go up still with that confidence every time in telling jokes and in trying new things. Um, Cause I think it'll make me better. And so when did the show, uh, super nice, uh, shout out Manny was the dude who booked it. And thank you for having me. Um, it was, it was super cool. Like this really kitschy kind of dive bar, super fun pool tables, like the whole thing. Um, and there were, there was like six comics. Um, and you know, I, I was watching the comics who went up before me and I was sitting there thinking like, this is the perfect room and time for me to try something that I've never done before. And I went through my notes because I have a note that says joke ideas. And I picked... Do you really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good for you. Absolutely. Dude. Good for you. And I picked two on there that I liked and that I've kind of told before and like talked out loud a little bit, but never really tried. And I just went on stage and was like, fuck it. And I did it. And uh, one of them one of them doesn't really have an end destination. And I kind of knew that going in. But I just wanted to tell the story and see if the funny parts in the middle were still there and stuff like that. Um, and I, I want to find an end destination for it because I think it'll be fun. Yeah, I have an idea. And I, I tried another one that I had been talking, I've been talking about for a long time. Yes. It was the first thing I ever wrote down in that note tag. I remember. And on the way over to it, Kool-Aid, I drove Kool-Aid over there. 
Um, and we were talking about it and we had said a couple of things and I was like, those are the, that's, that's what I'm missing. And so I tried that on stage. Um, and it, it was great. It was great. The, it, it's more, I'll give you the premise just so. No, I don't. Okay. Um, or not. Yeah. Don't. But, uh, uh, it got good laughs throughout the whole thing. I only did five minutes. Um, he was like seven max. And so I got the light at five and I was like, yeah, I could just, I'll just end it right here. Sure. Um, and it was great, man. Like I, I felt really good. Um, when I was super nervous the first time, because I like to stand at the mic and not really move around, uh, this time I picked up the mic and walked and paced across stage because I figured it would help my nerves a little bit. And it did. Um, I said some jokes that you had played on me when I was a teenager up front, kind of just kind of, you know, loosen it and whatnot. Um, and I kind of liked how I started that. And that's probably how I'll start shows. I agree. That aren't. That you're not, that's not your shows. Tell me, was it more satisfying, less satisfying to do this and get laughs in front of this crowd? Um, I, or neither, I, same. I, I think it was, I don't think it was more satisfying. It was definitely satisfying to know that I went up there completely on a whim and just did five minutes that I have never even talked out loud or yep. tried before. And they were just kind of ideas. Um, and it was satisfying to know that my, my, brain was able to kind of keep up with the story and still think of things and remember punchlines for things that I've talked about three times out loud with mm -hmm, other people. Mm -hmm. um, so I wouldn't say more satisfying, but definitely satisfying. And again, it's still that high, you know, of like, I'm just going to try something real quick. And both of them worked. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. well, Just so you know, dude, super proud of you. Thank you. Super proud of you. Super proud of you. Keep pushing yourself. We, we were in LA yesterday. We did Jason Nash's podcast, which was a ton of that's by the way, before we get to that, I, I, I don't want to leave Vancouver quite yet. Okay. First of all, I love that city. Super cool city. I want to go back when it's not raining. I agree, which is two months out of the year. I will say something else. What we learned in Vancouver. First of all, I went into a legit straight up on the, in the middle of the street next to an ice cream store, mushroom shop. Crazy. Called Zoomers. Guys, it was like 7-Eleven, but with mushrooms. It had every strain of mushroom I'd ever heard of and probably 15 I had never heard of in a display case. Crazy. I mean, uh, it's, it's like, what a, time, what a time to be alive. How great did those mushrooms look? Amazing. Dude, stop it. Amazing. So we bought some blue meanies. Um, but these mushrooms, so, and I was talking about, I'm like, is, is this legal? And they were like, yeah, you can. And I go, well, how many can I buy? I'm like, how many? They were like, you know, a lot. How many do you want? Yeah, a lot. Yeah. And so we did a little more research and what they told us at the club, they were like, yeah, there's actually stores you can go into and buy Coke and heroin. And we were like, what yeah. the fuck is happening? But it was bananas. The, 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 the mushroom store was amazing. The weed store was great also, right? Dude, not only was the weed store good, the weed itself. Why did they sell DMT vape pens? Ah. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I Look, by the way, what a city. Holy shit. I Crazy. Mean, that's insane to me, like, to be able to sell that. But so I, I did a little more research on okay, it. Okay, okay. And so mainly what it is is, like, there's a, a, a decriminalization uh, just, like, tenure going on. It's about three years, yeah. and it's only in Vancouver. And it's the law mainly states that anyone 18 plus, if they're caught with, uh, like, two and a half grams, that's the limit, two and a half grams, over two and a half grams of... Uh, like cocaine, crack, uh, heroin, LSD, all, all your opioids, everything. Two and a half grams is the legal limit for you to have with you in public. And you can use all of them in public, but there are restrictions like you can't be near a bus stop or near a school or near a hospital or shit like that. Well, uh, well I think you should be able to be near a hospital. That's a good point, actually. <laughs> but, but so... The, <laughs> the, the, so what the goal is, because there's been a lot of uh, tainted drug supply, so they're trying to limit the amount of overdoses, but also... Yeah, but, but how does that limit it unless the government is, is, is making it. it? That's what I also thought. But then I looked in a little more, and the main thing behind it is that they want to get rid of the, stig the stig stigmatism? Stigma. Stigma that being an addict or using drugs is a mental health thing, and you're not a criminal. So they're trying to... Do you, Why? Go, I don't know. Because, Did they think well, that'll... Mean, they want the drug addicts to feel better about themselves? No, I just think they more want, like, I don't know. I like hearing, <laughs> hearing, hearing that makes it sound like, obviously, society does look at, they don't look at drug addicts as 
mostly criminals, but like if you're a drug addict and you're at a certain point, like, you know, people do desperate times and desperate measures, right? But, yeah, but, but it is like, I do also think that addiction is, is, is 100% a mental health problem or not mental health, but it, it's, it's something in that area for sure. Um, I, want, I don't know enough about it to go and say yes or no to that. I, I will tell you this. I don't, I'm not in favor of either cocaine or heroin being legal. I'm going to tell you something right now. With a hundred percent certainty, if heroin had been legal, I would have tried it. When you were younger? There is no doubt in my mind that if heroin was legal, I would have tried it. Now, I would tell you this for some people also who never tried Coke because it was so illegal. It felt so illegal. Right. Like, and those drug dealers felt so much more like drug dealers than weed guys. Right, right, right. That they, it was, they were just scared to do it. But I know the amount of people who use Rid Ritalin, right? And they use it to focus, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I think I think for a lot of people, that might start out with, you know what? I'm going to take a bump of this Coke. It's going to let me, not I'm not going to get wired out, but I'm going to, just like I take my Ritalin in the morning before I go to work or my Ritalin before I write, I'm just going to go down to 7-Eleven. I'm going <laughs> to buy just a little bit of that Colombian gold. But that, I think, I don't, I, I, I think people will try Coke that would have never tried it. I think it'll lead less fentanyl overdoses. I think it'll lead to more of a, a addiction, addiction problem. A hundred percent. I don't know. And this is one man's opinion, everybody. So leave the, but, but so again, did a little more research because I was so curious. Yeah. I literally just Googled, can I buy cocaine in Vancouver? Cause that's like, just like yeah. what I can think of. And so this is what popped up a Vancouver, a, a dude named Jerry Martin opened a store in Vancouver that sells opioids, uh, uh, cocaine, crack, heroin, LSD, mushrooms, DMT, all of those, all, all of them, right? Okay. However, he is not operating legally. He's a drug dealer with a storefront who's not getting arrested? Yeah. It's a mobile, it's a mobile, mobile shop. Um, oh, a mobile shop. He's in his car. <laughs> yeah, that's a drug dealer. <laughs> well, he's not. He's not in. I think yeah, it's more like. I so think you just call Jerry, you page him, you tell him where to go, and he drives over. Yeah, that's what drug dealers do. But so he. But that's true. But so he also like. He. <laughs> Why do they call it a shop? It's because it's a. Sh well, no, it, like the the picture I'm seeing right here is literally him in front of a storefront. It doesn't say anything, but it's just him in front of a doorway. And it's got like a list of things he sells. There's a limit of how much you can buy and you have to be 18 to go in. But so, it, what, like, what, what, I have a lot of questions. Here's, by the way, we'll post, are we, can we post the storefront, Matt, so people can see what it looks like in, in the video? Yeah, yeah I mean, okay. again, but the picture again doesn't like show like what it looks like. Yeah, just people are going to be like, curious. Okay, but so, this is my question. One, where the fuck is Jerry getting all these drugs? Yeah, he's buying them from drug dealers. Yeah, that but and then but then also he tests them before he sells them to right. make sure he's Smart. not selling anything like that. Yeah. But but it's like I I I I don't get how he's operating. Fine. Can can you Google the store? Can you get me the prices and all that stuff? Let me see. Because your Canadian money is in the shitter, so you could go up and buy a fucking straight key. There's a picture. Probably harder to get across a, the border. There's a picture right here. Okay, of it says uh, no impurities or cuts, 18 plus ID required. Uh, cocaine, two and a half grams, two hundred and twenty dollars. Uh, crack cocaine, two and a half grams, two hundred and fifty dollars. One gram of heroin, two hundred dollars. <laughs> Methamphetamine, two and a half grams, a hundred dollars. <laughs> MDMA, like two full hits, one hundred and fifty dollars. Canadian, Canadian. That means that's, we, a, that's probably one twenty, something like dude, that for us. Uh, two and a half grams of meth for a hundred dollars. I don't know. Have anything to judge that against? I've never bought two and a half grams of meth. I just I feel like <laughs> two and a half grams of meth cost more than a hundred dollars. You, you know, I did meth once by accident. You did tell me that. Okay, I always yeah. love how you say by accident. It was by accident. I, I don't know, want I know, people thinking I was doing it on purpose. I know it makes it just makes me laugh that you always say by accident. It was by accident. I know it was. I know okay. it was. It's just funny. But so and, and like out of all of those. Okay. Yep. Out of all of those, hmm, no, because MDMA is going to be the one you pick. Out of all of those that you're most curious about, I, mean, I don't want you trying any of them, but if you were going to try one, what would it be? Fucking okay, not heroin, not crack, and not meth. 
So Coke. I, I mean, I guess that's like the only one on there that other than MDMA, like yeah. that's what I would choose because yeah. I haven't done it before. I haven't done any of those, but I would want to do the MDMA because that seems like more my wheelhouse. Yeah, I agree. To by the way, totally. None of the other ones seem like my wheelhouse whatsoever. Can, I, can I tell you what I would try? Her heroin. Uh, you already said that. Because here's the deal, guys. The first half of every heroin movie looks so much, looks like so much fun. Every heroin movie, dude, those, that first half, I'm like, this drug is amazing. They're writing the best songs. They're having the best sex. They're having a great time. It's the second half of the heroin movie that really deters me from doing heroin. Yeah. Which is why I just want you to be prepared. When I hit 85, dude, if I'm in good health or not, I'm doing some heroin. I'm not going to shoot it up. I'm going to snort it. I just want to see what it feels like. At, but why at 85? Nah, probably, because then I'm already, it, I'm already, yeah, but I'm it, already 85. It, but it might shut down your body doing heroin at 85. Okay. How about not? Because if you're in good health, I'd like you to stay in good health at 85. Yeah, and be, no, 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 no. This is not a conversation. At 85, one of the kids will be watching you. And I guarantee you, one of those nurses in the nursing home is not going to go out and get you heroin. What, am I in a nursing home? Is that where you've already put me in a nursing home at 85? I'm just spitballing. That you're spitballing with me in a nursing home? Yeah, you know, just weighing the options. I up. thought you said I was in good health. Why do I need to be in a nursing home? Because none of us want to take care of you. Why <laughs> do I need someone to take care of me if I'm in good health? Because apparently you might be trying heroin. So you might need somebody <laughs> to take care of you when you try heroin. I think you're it, not trying heroin. I think at 85, you got to give me the green light just to see what it's like. If I die at 85, I die at 85. Zero chance. Well, I'm going to have to. I wonder how chance just because of that, I'm going to make sure you're in a nursing home at 85 health or good health or no, whatever. But Dude, you're I, just going to get a phone call one day and it's going to be your sister. And she's going to be like, Hey, why did dad decide to go to Vancouver? <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be like that motherfucker. Dude. And that's, you're going to know, you'll know the hotel I'm going to be in. Oh yeah. And, but in 30 years, who knows? This might all be legal. I'm saying I'm, you don't think at 85, I've earned the right to try some heroin? I don't know if you can earn the right to try heroin. I think you just try it if you want to. Yeah. But at 85, it just seems like a dangerous idea. Oh, dude, It's a dangerous it's... idea at any point in time, ladies and gentlemen. But it just seems like... Oh, I think at 85, you're rolling the dice whether you live or not. Yeah. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. That's why I'm waiting until I'm 85. But if you're in good health at 85, fuck that. How about if I'm not in good health? Are you, are you okay with me trying it? Uh, no. <laughs> You're really drawing a hard line here. With we'll heroin. have this conversation in 30 years. How about that? I won't be 85 in 30 years. I'll be 84. Yeah, not 85. Though. 31 years then. I would you be? See, I wouldn't do coke or any of that things that's going to stop my heart at 85. How do you know heroin's not going to stop your heart at 85? I don't, but it'll be a fucking nice trippy ride to the stoppage of the heart. It looks like so much fun. Did you ever see, what was that movie with fucking, uh, I forget the name. But the first half of the hair, the first half of a heroin movie looks like fun. So that's all I'm saying. Okay. So let me live my first half of the heroin movie. Fuck no. Okay. You're really being unreasonable. Oh, you want me to tell, you want me to tell mom that at 85 you want to try heroin? See what she says? No. I don't want you to do that because then she'll make sure that I don't. Perfect. But your mom's going to be alive and kicking at 85. Right. So you should also be alive and kicking at 85 and not trying heroin. I don't know how this is even a conversation. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Well, uh, uh, um, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Uh, and last night, um, one last thing, and then I want to get into what you want to talk about. We get back to the hotel room and we had bought some of Joey Diaz's weed from the ice cream shop in Studio City. The weed there is fantastic. Joey's weed, it's called Laughing Gas. It is legit. Good Lord. If you're in LA or Studio City, that, that weed is no joke. Joey smokes it, so that's how you know it's good. Yeah. But we have a day. We were going to fly back last night. The meeting went so well. We ended up missing our flight. We ended up getting a hotel room. This is the only time this has ever happened with you and I. We were going to celebrate. We got a room with a balcony. True. We we're going to celebrate and go and just, you were like, you ready to smoke some weed, old man? Let's go. Some we, and, and it was not one room, two beds. It was one room, one bed. Yep. So we went king bed and we ordered some food. And uh, yeah, you, you fell asleep. Yo, 
Uh, yeah. 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 I fell asleep before you did. Here's the thing. You never fall asleep before I did. No. I was I was hungry when we first started smoking weed. Then the food showed up and I ate $70 worth of Korean food. By the way, guys, if you order $70 worth of Korean food, you have ordered a lot of food. I'm also amazed I haven't had to get up mid mid midway through this podcast. It's been a rough day. Has it? Oh, yeah. Has it been fiery? Understatement is fiery. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let me ask you, is it tender to wipe? Not yet. That's a problem when it's tender to wipe. Yep, yep. When when your butthole feels like like you put your hand on a burner. Yeah. And you're like, oh. Yeah, it's yeah. uh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm amazed I haven't had to get up through this podcast yet. Really? Were you planning on maybe getting up? You never know. But you know, it's always like I love the Asian culture of food. Any of it. Mm -hmm. It's all great. It's spicy and I love it. It's always worth it for me to eat it because it's so much so enjoyable the day of, but it's really hard to enjoy the day after. Right. So, but for me, it's always worth it because I just, I just love Asian food. Awesome. So dude. much. Yeah, but it was so good, by the way, when we got home, I went on a walk with Indiana Jones and your mom and I love living here, man. It's great. I love living here. It's great living here. I love it here too. Um, by the way, before we move any further, Buffalo is next. And then where? Dania Beach, Florida. Oh, for, for Valentine's Day. Correct. Buffalo, uh, next week. Dania Beach, week after that. Sacramento, San Francisco, week after that. Yeah. ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates. Thank you so much to everybody who's listening and watching to watching the pod. Um, Jacob Wolf, what do you got for me this week? Um, you know, being on Jason Nash's podcast yesterday, and, you know, we talked a lot about, uh, about family and about us and about him and his kids. And I don't know, like, uh, something struck a chord and a core memory kind of showed up that is is one of my favorites. And it's uh, with me, Kate, and Trev, which are my siblings, for those who mm -hmm. don't know. And uh, I was probably around five or six. And uh, I was, we were in Seattle for Christmas that year. And it was Christmas Eve. And we were all sitting in the living room, just kind of hanging out, looking outside. It's sometimes snowed in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Not very often, but mm -hmm. it did happen. And we were all sitting there looking out the, the sliding glass door. And every single one of us made a collective wish of, I really hope it snows Christmas morning. Mm -hmm. And there was no, nothing in the forecast. It wasn't supposed to snow. There was like, there was, there was nothing. We all went to sleep that night and Trevor woke up first. Trevor woke Kate up. Kate woke me up. And they were like, I was like, what's up? And they were like, just, just come with us. And we went same to that sliding glass door, same spots we were the night before. And a foot had snow, a foot of snow had fallen overnight. That's nice. And it was like a crazy, it was like, we were all like Christmas miracle or like Christmas wish. And it was like a really kind of like magical. How old were you think? I think I was probably five or six. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was really just like kind of like a magical Christmas morning because we looked outside, we all opened presents, and then we went outside to play in the snow. All the other kids in the, in the, in the complex had come out to play in the snow. We all just stayed out there for probably until the sun went down, just throwing snowballs. I love that, Doing dude. this whole thing. Like it was, it, it was such a core memory for me. And I don't know why it popped up, but it did. Shout out, Caitlin and Trevor. I love you guys. Um, you know, let's, 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 let's make some more of those. For sure. Yeah, dude, I wish you guys had more memories together. The, the fact of the matter is the three of you didn't spend a whole lot of time together. No. You know, the, you did when you were younger. Right. But as you get older, the three of you just didn't, you know, Kate bounced back and forth between our place and Seattle, Seattle where your biological mom lived. Mm -hmm. And Trevor stayed up there and you stayed down yeah. with me. And so there was a, um, very few times where you guys were together. The holidays. Holidays, sometimes yep. on the summer, like summer break. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. I, do, I do wish that you guys had more core memories. You know, I, 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 I've said it to you about a million times, and I eventually stopped because I know it's not fair to put that pressure or responsibility on you. So I've stopped saying it. Or I would say, I wish you and your brother and your sister were closer. Yeah. Or I, I wish you, um, you know, I would say to you. Right. You should reach out and, and all this stuff. Yeah. And, I, and I'll, I'll tell you something, honestly, dude. If we're being honest, and I think you know this. I, you know, I know from their perspective, you've had it easier. But I can tell you, without, without any doubt, when I look back on this, if I'm thinking now, I've, I definitely have put more pressure on you 
and expected more from you. And I have more guilt wrapped up in your brother and sister. Right. For some things that have happened to them during their lives that, that were not my responsibility and not having anything to do with me. But I have a lot of guilt wrapped up in that because you have, um, as a parent, you're, hmm, as a parent, you're one thing when this little person is like, I'm going to protect this person. For, when, no matter what I got to do for the rest of my life, I'm going to protect this fucking person. Right. And when that doesn't happen, there's a lot of guilt wrapped up in that. And so I, I have asked you to do things. And, and I, I caught that. It was maybe, it's been a year, maybe more than a year since I was asking you about. Yeah, I think it's, I th I think but, it's been probably uh, more than a year, yeah, something like that. But I remember you saying to me, hey, this is not my responsibility. They can also reach out to me. And you were like, stop talking to me about this. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had hit, for you to say something like that, I must have hit a real boiling point because you, you're you not a dude, you're going to say something when you have hit your limit. Yeah, yeah, not I, before that. I, I, usually let, I usually let it go unless like, unless that first thing you say is the limit. Do you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for me, and again, this is not me saying like, I didn't want to call Trevor and I didn't want to call Kate, but you know, we're, we're all adults at yes. a certain point. Yep. And, and for me to be the youngest sibling constantly reaching out, like, it's also like that, uh, not that I don't want to bug them, you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. we're all adults and I it can it. go, it can go absolutely two ways. And, and that has nothing saying again, that I don't want to talk to my siblings, but it, it is definitely for me, that's what it was. It's not my responsibility to form it yeah. and to, or to like help further it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, and I want everybody to know, like I have a great, I would say great relationship with all three of my kids. Yeah. I really have a great, and so does Beth. And, and um, we have great relationships. I, I just wish the relationship that the three of you had was was just more like the how I I, mean, I guess I judge it by like my brothers and I, but we all lived together. We all had the same yep, mom and dad. Grew we up all, together. Yeah, we all ended up in the same city. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Like yep. Th that whole shebang. And there wasn't that divisive thing that happened early on, right? As kids. Yeah, it, well, it wasn't a separated household. Yeah. Or, I mean, ours was never a separated household. No. But, like, you know, b between, you know, that. The, the way, substance. yeah, the way it worked, guys, is that the, um, my ex, when we split up, uh, basically took Caitlin and Trev, and I took Jakey. And, um, and then, I mean, I mean, Trevor and Caitlin stayed with me after we split up for a little while. Mm. And then when she started to get her shit together in Seattle, she grabbed, Kate and Trev. And then Kate came back uh, for a few years and then went back up and then came back yep. down. Trev came down for like six months during his fifth grade year and was like, this just isn't for me and, and went back up to Seattle. Yeah. That's basically the kind of lowdown of how that went. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. I, and I, I, um, I got to blow my nose. I'm yeah. So yeah. Sorry. I realized that I had put pressure on you. I apologize for that. Don't, don't, don't apologize for that. It's, it's, again, it's, it's stuff like the fact that it's recognized, you know what I'm saying by you and, and you're seeing it. And I appreciate the apology. I really do. But also like, like there was extra pressure, but not really. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, also, yeah, I no, think but I put we, all the pressure on you. Yeah. I, I didn't reach out to them about it. I reached, I, oh, I, oh. it was you. Yeah. Well, it's all right. It's yeah. okay. We're all adults. We all and adults. I appreciate the apology. And I will say that I'm so excited for both your brother and sister. Me too. Who seem to be, uh, not seem to be, who are in great places right now. Finding a stride. Yeah, I'm super excited. You're finding your stride too. The, yeah. the, the Wolf family is, is on the uptake, everybody. I have a follow-up for my core memory. Okay. Is there one that you have of you and your brothers? Could be when you guys were adults, could be when you guys were kids, but there is, is there a core memory that when you think about it, you really go to for you and your brothers? I'm going to blow my nose now. Well... It's an interesting question because there, I, I will tell you what I, I don't know why I remember this, but you know, we didn't have any money growing up and you know, for, there was a period there where my dad didn't have a job and my mom, I think made like $27,000 a year, something like that, $30,000 a year. And, um, so vacations, I'm going to put in air quotes 
But I remember we went on this one vacation and I forget, maybe we were in Rhode Island or Maine or someplace on the beach. But this is how, this is how cheap it was. First, those East Coast beaches are rocky and pebbles. Not comfortable. But this beach had so many horse flies. You know what a horse fly is? Oh, yeah. That we walked in a conga line. And since I was the youngest, I was in front. And the person behind you was just slapping the flies off your back. That's ridiculous. Right? Who was slapping the dudes the it, dude at the end of the line? It, my dad didn't have anyone. He was just getting munched on. And we walked down the beast. It was fucking banana. That's hilarious. Yeah, but I don't know why those are the type of... I remember driving down the Mass Pike in the station wagon that had the seats looking out the rear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we would stop at this place called Howard Johnson's. I also remember my, you know, my dad was not a dude who was going to pull over and go to the bathroom unless he had to go. Yep. It, it, we'd be like, we gotta go to the bathroom. He'd be like, you're fine. We're like, I'm not really, but <laughs> yeah. I love, oh my God. Yeah, dude. I loved he, his favorite was you're fine. But about everything. I'm fine. I'm falling. I tear my knee. You're fine. I love that. It, it's different, but, but you know, it's nothing for me. My memories with my brothers and my family are, so much more like when I think back, I think of the dinner table and all six of us sitting around it and people, you know, my mom asking about school and, you know, I sat across from Adam. One of the reasons I eat so quickly is I sat across from Adam and Adam barely chewed his food and I wanted seconds, but you had to eat fast to get seconds. Yeah. Especially with four teenage boys at the same Fuck. time. Yo, dude. My, so I was never a tomato fan. And, but we would only have a certain amount of tomatoes on the salad. And so it was, it, everybody had to count their tomatoes. <laughs> I remember them arguing. Dan would be like, join us for tomatoes. That's the most sibling thing. That's like I, Kate, when, when Kate and I, when Kate lived with us when we were kids and she would go to fill us up a glass of something like juice or chocolate milk or whatever a it was. A glass of juice? Juice. Oh. Like orange juice. Got it. Was, Jesus. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's so, and we would pour it out. And she would give me mine and, and she would go take hers. But before she did, I'd be like, no, no, put that down. And I would sit there and I would measure, measure it to make sure she didn't give me less than what she got. So, yeah, but that's, that's a sibling. I love that little sibling. Yo, thing. God help you. If you use Jonathan's Dallas Cowboys cup, he would lose his fucking mind. Everybody had their own cups. You know what I mean? And if you drank out of somebody's cup, yo, that shit was a fight. Oh, it was going I mean, but down. If you, if you drank out of John's Cowboy cup, you also lose in the playoffs. Yeah, day. hilarious. You, John's Cowboy Cup. Yo, Jonathan also, when he was growing up, he had the nickname Hogathan because he would just take more than his share. When he, well, look, we had a s ice cream. We had a certain amount. John Hogathan would fucking fill up that bowl, bro. Hogathan is crazy. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, we called him Hog. Well, not me. I was younger. I never called him Hogathan. Yeah, you didn't want to get beat up. No, no. But I think Adam and Dan called him Hogathan. You know, Adam used to... I told you one night he didn't want to babysit Dan, and so he just put him in the closet. Hilarious. Night. I love that. <laughs> that is the most ridiculous thing. <laughs> Yo, I had a neighbor. Okay. They, I think... Did I tell you this? I don't know. You haven't told it yet, so Okay, I so I went to their <laughs> house. Everybody had a neighbor... In my era, anyways, you had a neighbor whose, like, kids did fucking terrible things to each other. Like, we fucked with each other, but you're like, dude, they punch each other in the face full fist. Like, they, uh, you know, just, like, doing terrible things. So I had this friends. I won't say their names. They know who they are. I was at their house one day, and they had their... This is how parenting was different, too, right? <laughs> They, the two older brothers had their younger brother in the dog crate and they were, <laughs> they were poking him with pool cues <laughs> and, and their dad walks through and he goes, Hey, and I kind of stiffened up. Cause I was like, Oh, this is going to be the end of this, right? Terrible. Yeah. He goes, make sure Aaron's out of there in 15 minutes. The dog's going to need the crate. <laughs> and he just walked <laughs> That is absolutely just like, just, just awful. It was 
so different. You couldn't get away with that shit right now. In today's day and oh, age? Oh, my God. The fact that the dad was just like, get him out of there. The dog's going to need that crate. You got 15 minutes with him in the crate was hilarious. He was like, I don't want to ruin my kid's fun. Oh, uh, I don't know what he was thinking, but it was definitely funny. Oh my God. Yeah, it was a different time. Like, And I will say, I'm so glad that you, the one thing, you never got that kind of level of torture from your brother and sister. No. Not no. even, not even close. I don't even know. Anything. There wasn't, there wasn't really any physical, anything. Not my house. No, I don't know what happened up uh, uh, in Seattle, but in my house, we were, we weren't going to do have the punching in the. That wasn't going to happen. Not in front of me, anyways. Like, yeah, yeah. That's and right. he was, he was bigger than you. Although he was physically rough on your sister. Right. Younger. Right. Right. Younger. I didn't have any of that. No, you didn't. You yeah. had the, your daughter, your sister, who was a fierce protector of you. Yep. She was gonna fuck somebody up. She has oh, fucked yeah. some people up. A couple, two, three times. Yeah. Yeah, she's not fucking around. Nope. Um, super ride or die. And I don't know if Trev ever had that. I don't know if he ever had the opportunity to have the big brother instincts because I'm not sure you were around enough for that. Yeah, and I think also like uh, uh yeah, that, and that and that's totally fair. Um, but he, you know, of course still is my big brother mm -hmm. and I'd go for advice or go for anything. I will tell you one thing I did get from Trevor though, the way I play video games. Angry? Super. Super angry. Yeah. I heard not be, not just from him, but Xbox Live when I was 13 was a heinous place. Really? Dude, I'm gonna... Matt, I don't know if you know about like you remember like Xbox like game chat and like, yo, I'm gonna pull up some videos for you and send them to you. Yeah. Kids today could never would never survive or even would be able to contemplate or comprehend the things that I heard when I was a kid. I wonder why it doesn't happen anymore. Look, gaming is still toxic. Don't get me wrong. Not as toxic as it used to be. Because old old school, like Call of Duty and like Gears of War, I've never seen something more toxic. But why would you, why not just play the game? Why get in the chat then? That's what I did. I, I kept my headphone off. I just like yeah. to hear people yell at each other. But when I was with friends, if we had a full team, oh, it was, it was full-blown obscenities. And just obscenities. obscenities and just yelling at each other. And yeah, the, the things that I've heard, even in today's day and age, things that I've heard in a game chat or from, from randoms, some people are just angry. Are you talking about like, like, um, uh, like in, uh, what's the, your favorite end game where they went to get Thor and he threatened that guy to fly over to that kid's house. Huh? Wasn't, wasn't that an end game when they went to get Thor for, and he was big fat. And then the dude, the, the guy who was the rock. You know, he was on his headsets and he goes, hey, Thor, you know, Valkyrie 34 is yelling at me again. And he got out and he goes, oh, hey, is this Valkyrie 34? I'll, I'll fly over there. How's my accents, by the way? Honestly, for that character, wasn't too bad. Which one? The, the first one. Hey, Thor. The, yeah, that, that Thor, that oh, one's actually Thor, Valkyrie 34 is yelling at me again. Uh, the, yeah. That one. Oh, with, Thor, I got Yeah, that's got where it. I would have stopped it. The smaller. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's funny. You get your first two words usually are pretty good. It goes downhill from there. Because I picked two small words that really I could probably fake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, Thor. That's easy. Thor. Thor. But yeah, so that one wasn't bad. But yeah, but so uh, there was there were things like the reason I've calmed down playing video games now. I've learned, I've enjoying them so much more when I learned not to take things so serious. And video games are way more fun for me. I'm calm, way more calm playing video games now. But Trevor is a good, in, not not a good influence, but the influence of why I played games the way I did. Yeah. Up. Yeah. And I, he think was, he's, and he, I think he's come down a little too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's never like physically, like the physical torture was never a thing for me. It was more just like, like teasing or like yeah. something about my hair, which he couldn't talk because he flat ironed his hair at 5 a.m. every morning. <sighs> Remember when he flat ironed his hair and he wore skinny jeans and he had those snake bite? Uh, lip, lip piercings? Yeah. And by the way, not just, you, did you say women's skinny jeans? Because that's important. Were they women's skinny jeans? Dog, he wore women's pants. What? Oh. That's why they were so tight. Yo, dude, he's got huge thighs. Why was he wearing women's skinny jeans? Apparently to show them off for some reason. He Trevor, didn't... Trevor, why? Why? Why did you wear women's skinny jeans? I'd like to know. I wow, on blast with the. Now you already told everybody he flat ironed his hair, which is a. And but the. Oh, I want to send Matt a picture so he can put it up so bad, but I want to get Trevor's approval for it. I think we definitely should. Matt, I'm going to send you a picture. We of should definitely get Trevor's approval. Okay, Matt, you might get a picture of Trevor's flat iron hair. Um, but yeah. I, I think that would be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. But 
I remember those days. I remember how long it took him to get ready in the bathroom. Dude, dude. Up, up at 4.30. 30 minute shower. 5 a.m. He's out. He's flat ironing his hair. Or like dries it off. He did blow dry, flat iron. But like, he was very emo. Hairspray. Oh yeah, he was he was emo. Yeah. And and so, but like, I mean, he was in the bathroom for two hours. Yeah, but so are you, but you're shitting. Yeah, but not every morning. What? If you didn't have your phone, how much less time would you be in the bathroom? Probably a good amount. Fifty percent? Yeah, probably somewhere around there. Are you scrolling on the shitter? Are you replying to people? Uh, I'm doing a little bit of both. Like I, I always look at the, the the notifications to see what I had for like posts or whatnot, so I can respond. But then a lot of the times I just get lost in TikTok. Can I tell you if I text? I just straight up lose track of time. If I text you from the toilet, I I sign it from the shitter. <laughs> I want you to know as you're reading this that I'm pooping. I haven't gotten that one yet. From no, you. you haven't gotten uh, from the shitter. But, but I, I for I, sure have gotten texts from you while you were pooping. E- yeah, but you- the last one I just said, I'm pooping. So I didn't have to say I'm from the shitter. You didn't say you were pooping. You sent me a picture of you shitting yourself. That's how I knew you were pooping. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I did that too. But yeah. that was a little while ago. Guys, I don't want you to think that happens all the time. But it, it did it, happen a few weeks back. It does. It happens a lot. It doesn't happen a lot. Why would you say a lot? I'm not going to lie. I jinxed myself earlier and talking about pooping is making me have to poop. So I'm going to wait. A couple more minutes. Well, what time did we start? How long? I know this is like how much time? It was we like got? it was like four minutes in when we started. So, so we're can like, you can you wait eight minutes? Yeah. What if I just start going? Bloop, bloop. I'm, you might just see me walk out, and you might have to close the podcast now. I don't know what that sound is. I don't either. <laughs> That's not what it sounds like. When I poop everybody, I want you to know. Is that the sound your asshole makes? No. <laughs> I don't even know what that noise is. Why would I? It's not like the sound of pee makes me want to pee. The sound of poop doesn't make me. It's the thinking about poop. That's where I'm at right now because we were talking about it a lot and I jinxed myself earlier and now we're going to see how long I can last. And we both know that nothing makes you need to poop more than pulling into the driveway at your house. And there's no way I'm going to do that. Oh, dude, if you, if by the time you pull in, if sometimes I don't know I got to poop, and then I pull into my driveway. I'm like, well, I'm going to shit in the car. Yeah, or this on the lawn. Is, this is about like to happen. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have pooped on the lawn. And in a shoebox. Um, in the shoebox on the side of the house. Well, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just said and a shoebox. I was just saying like. You got, you're sweating on the nose. Am I sweating again? Yeah. Oof. You nose sweat. I, I, I wonder why that's where it comes out. I don't know. Maybe I, like, cause whenever I do like this wipe, right? Because like sometimes I breathe while I'm doing it. And yeah. So maybe it's like the hot air comes up and like. It's like a condensation thing. I don't know. You're, you're like BB King. You just get sweat. You're like Shaq. You get sweat all over your face. Well, I don't have it all over my That's face. True, just I just it's the... like it's just like two little tear drops here. How great would that be though? If like when you play when you sport when you sweat it not on your face, just straight off the top of your nose. It would be awful. Yeah, it wouldn't be the best because it would go straight into my mouth. It would feel like I'd have a runny nose all the time. But I will say, when I play sports, I don't sweat like Shaq. But you know me, I'm a yeah. I am drenched after like pickup games or, or anything like that. Oh, hey, hey, everybody. I did get a message. Uh, they were like, hey, a couple of weeks ago, you promised you were going to do an email episode. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to check on the emails. Heymanpod at gmail.com. For next week. Hey, oh. man, with three A's. We'll do it next week. Oh, no. no next we week, won't. we're, we're no. doing the with. No, no. Next week is not Tom Wolf. No. Next the week after. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll do it next week. Yeah. How about that? Okay. Well, so if you've got any questions, guys, you can ask us anything serious, not serious. Hey, man, pod three A's at gmail.com. We're going to put that up on the screen. Blink, blink. Yep. Hey, man, pod at, at gmail.com. Yellow. Um, now listen, dude, we're coming up on the end. Yeah. Thank God. Tell me, oh, is it really getting close? Oh, it's creeping up. Are you clenching your not right now. sphincter right now? Not right now. Uh, when it gets to that point, I do. But also I feel like sometimes if you do it too much, like, your, your body just eventually is going to give out. So like I, so sometimes, sometimes when I'm clenching, I feel like I actually tire the muscles. Correct. And so some, sometimes when it settles, I let it relax a little bit until I get to a point to where I can't. It's like, it's like I'm doing Kegels. Yeah. It's like I'm doing reps. Legit. I might 
you know what? I- I'm going to do a little test. You're going to hold your poop so much? For the next month, anytime I fly, I'm going to do butthole kegels for 10 minutes. And I'm going to see, but just with the clenching and the holding and then the releasing. And so I'm going to see if it, if it, if my, if my butthole muscles get stronger. I'm not going to lie. That's a great way to end this podcast. I don't, <laughs> I don't know how to follow that up, ladies and gentlemen. But guys, by the way, I'm going to Google butthole kegels and the correct way to do them. I'm not just going to go on willy nilly. You know me. I don't think you're going to get the right videos you want. I think butthole kegel, the correct uh, way to do them. Dr. Kang taught me. You just asked Dr. Kang. What? Yeah, I was. Why did uh, Doctor King talk I, to you about? I said there was one time I was having like kind of lower back pain, but also some some sphincter pain, and I was like, I, like sometimes it just felt like like a cramp almost. I was like, what is that? He goes, you have a weak butthole, and I was like, okay. Oh. Um, I was like, I was like, I, I, I don't I don't know how I'm supposed to feel about that. Thank you, I guess. Wait. And so he was like, so, so he was like, so you have to try sometimes. Sitting just uh, like straight up, knees together, and you have to do Kegel exercises. <gasps> Dr. King told you you had a weak butthole. He did. <laughs> he did. <laughs> Dr. King did tell me I had a weak butthole. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Might be. <laughs> On that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for stopping by. <laughs> I've been Jacob Wolf. That's been Josh Wolf. ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates and tickets. We're going to be in a city near you. We are on the road every weekend until Memorial Day. So please, come see us. Come have some fun. These shows are going to be amazing. We we will not be talking about my weak butthole at any of the shows. Let's start up a GoFundMe for Jacob's weak butthole. Do your kegels, everybody. (laughs) Thank you so much for coming in. Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms. Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. It's Jake Wolf on TikTok. Do something nice for someone today. Tell someone you love them. And remind everybody to do Kegel exercises so they don't have a weak butthole. We'll see you guys next week. I'm ADHD brain, I'm fidgety, that's just kind of the person I am. So I know if I'm on stage with no hat on, I'm going to be running my hand through my hair every 37 seconds. Mm. And that's going to get distracting. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I think you should run it through that luscious hair. People are going to like that. Yeah, but I... And then slow-mo it. But it's going to bug me knowing I'm doing it every 35 seconds. You should run your hand through your hair in slow motion. And then I'll, I'll have the DJ play. Oh, yeah. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey man. Hey man. Hey man. So we, you are a Sasquatch guy. I'm a cryptid guy, or a cryptoid guy, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Cryptids and cryptoids. I don't think the Sasquatch is technically, oh no, technically a cryptid. You know what I'm talking about. Though. I don't like, know what a cryptid is. So a cryptid is like a skinwalker, or a mothman, or the chupacabra, or legend. Mythical. Right. But they're called cryptids. Okay. So, for me, I'm a big cryptid guy. You know why? Because why the fuck not? I'm in a shirt that says, let's summon demons. Um, and it's got pentagrams all over it. Yeah, that's And I'm also in a Winnie the Pooh uh, headband. Winnie the Pooh, 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 Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. Hey, man. Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh.